I could just call us into silence for a moment of reflection as we enter into hearing God's word and prayerfully reflecting on our past three days together and our call as we sit on the verge of Holy Week. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Beloved, I have a reading today. It is from Paul's letter to the Romans, um, an excerpt from chapter eight, beginning at verse 18. It is on the theme of future glory in the midst of contemporary suffering. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility not by its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly while we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, but who hopes for what is seen. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? For he who did not withhold his own son, but gave himself up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, and who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for our sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Here ends the lesson. Friends, I um, selected this reading before I even, um, I think, went to South Africa, or maybe it was while I was there. And I just returned about 48 hours ago. So the experience is still fresh in my mind. But combined with the stories I've heard from our fellow Christians in Pakistan, in Haiti, and in other places, um, is a opportunity to, excuse me. I um, have reflected upon 
both the sufferings of my siblings in Christ in South Sudan and these other countries I've mentioned, and what the persecutions that are going on in the church here in the 21st century. And so somehow the reality of what Paul wrote about 2000 years ago really strikes home. And yet at the same time, what I have sensed, and I don't have a lot of time to go into this, but my visit to South Africa, a country that I lived in and served in, and which is close to my heart, I think everyone who's been involved in mission has a particular place that they are called to deep affection and, and, and connection to. And for me, it is the nation and the Anglican church in Southern Africa. And of all the experiences I had in a short week there from Cape Town to Makanda, formerly known as Grahamstown with seminarians, ordinance there from the province, the thing that strikes out to me most was the past weekend on Sunday, I preached and celebrated mass at the Church of the Resurrection in Meadowlands in Soweto. And what it, was, what it left me was a place that was started in fact by missionaries of the church, the community of the resurrection, was the vibrance and joy and power of worship of about 400 people of dancing and singing and choruses and, and of scores and scores of young people as well, as well as adults and the elderly, of the vibrancy and resilience of a church. And when I think about just on the streets outside of that church where 30 years ago and, and longer, tanks rolled down the streets, bullets killed and injured young people, that those people, when they heard Paul's words, also wondered about the sufferings of their present age. And while there are great many things still to overcome in South Africa, the fact that the church is vibrant and that the problems that once inflicted that community, that community are no longer the problems they have. And that gives us hope in this context. Let us pray. Oh God, you created us in your image with the call that we who have been baptized into the death and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, that we have put away the old life of sin and that we are renewed in the spirit of our minds to live in righteousness and true holiness. We are called to make no peace with oppression and to respect the dignity of every human being. May your wisdom guide us and give counsel to us and to the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth was filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now for our closing of this worship, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>